Are you ready for the word of God? Yeah. Open up your Bibles. Yeah. Go to Joshua. Joshua chapter 14. God gave us a word that 2015, it's time to build. It's time to build. We cannot look at this year as another year just to waste watching others build and us waiting for something to happen. Amen. It's time to build. It's time to build a business. It's time to build a family. It's time to build a house. It's time to build your health. It's time to build your wealth. It's time to build. It's time to build your ministry. It's time to build your church. It's time to build. Tell your neighbor, it's time to build. And if I look at everything in my life, I think, well, I'm not ready to do that. I'm just not ready to do this. I'm not ready because I don't have everything that I'm supposed to have to build. The world is really good at showing you what you don't have and causing you to wait. So you wait one year to the next year to the next year to the next year to the next year. When I was young, I used to say, I'm going to get married when I'm, when I'm young. I'm going to get married when I'm real young. I want to get married when I'm real, real young. And, 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 and someone will ask, well, why do you want to get married when you're young? And I'm going to just tell you my mentality back then. My mentality back then was, well, I heard sex is good and I want to have as much of it as possible. <laughs> and I want to do it under the blessing of the Lord, so I'm going to get married when I'm young. That was my mindset, you know. Whatever worked, you know, but I, me, and, me and Veronica, we got married at 19 years old. Praise the Lord. You know, God honored my faith. Hallelujah. My wife is hiding over here. <laughs> Turning all sorts of shades of colors. But praise God. Amen. But see, I didn't need someone to, to, to come up to me and say, well, you're, you, you know, you, you got to finish college. You got you to finish all this and that, and you got to do this, and you got to do that. No, when I found Veronica, that's all I needed. <laughs> Amen. I, when, I, when I found Veronica, it was time to build. Amen. And I want to tell you, it's time to build. It's time to build. Don't get discouraged where you're at. Don't, get, don't look at the situations in your life and say, I can't, I'm not able. It's time to build. Amen. Now, the Bible talks about two ways of walking. There's two ways of walking. You can walk in the flesh or you can walk in the spirit. The, the, everyone in this world walks according to the flesh. They walk according to what they see and hear. They walk according to, to, to their, their history and their environment. And so that when you walk in the flesh, you're walking in fear. You go to a place and you look at the obstacles before you and they look too great and you say, well, I can't do it because it costs too much. I can't do it because I don't have the education. I can't do it because I'm not talented enough. There's always a reason why you cannot do it. And that's walking according to the flesh. But my Bible talks and my Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. I walk by faith and not by sight. I can't look, I can't walk by what I see. I got to walk according to what I believe. And I want to encourage you to walk by faith and not by sight. Walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. We are not saved, called by God, to go back to the flesh. We are saved, called by God, so that we can walk in the Spirit, so God can put inside of us His dreams and His desires for our life. Amen? And God's a good God. He's a powerful God, a big God. Amen? And He wants to be big in your life as well. Amen? Now, Joshua chapter 14, verse 6 says, then, then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Bernia. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Bernia 
to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord, my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly, wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said. These 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, 85 years old. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard him that day how the Anakin were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite. To this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Here he was when he was 40 years old. He went out, spied on the land. God gave him a promise. God, promise. God said, the land that I'm sending you is a land flowing with milk and honey. They went to the land. They saw the land. They saw that the land was exactly the way God described it. They came out of Egypt, walked through the desert into that land. And now they're right there at the edge of just crossing over, following God all along the way. And Moses sent out spies to look at the land. Caleb was one of the spies. And when they went, they, they went and they saw that the land was so amazing, so awesome. It was exactly the way God promised it. God took them right to the land, exactly the way God promised them. And everybody... They said, the land is wonderful, the land is awesome, but the people are great. And there ain't no way that we can overcome the people. They're too strong for us. Understand this, do not forget your God. God had taken them out of slavery. God had performed miracles of protection, miracles after miracles of provision. God had done so many miracles for their life. And now they're going, they're following God all the way to that land. And now they have no faith. They start dwelling on the might of their hand. They start saying, well, we're not strong enough. We're not able to overtake this land. And instead of entering into the promise of God, they end up having to go back into the desert and dying off. God had to take them back into the desert for 40 years. They walked and roamed until every one of them died, except for Caleb and Joshua. Caleb said, we are well able. Caleb came back with a report. Yes, the land is great, and yes, the people might look like they're strong, but our God is stronger. Our God is greater. We are well able to take the land. And nobody believed his report. So they went off and they died. But now here Caleb comes back. Now he's 85 years old. He might be 85 years old, but he still got kicking him. He still got something inside. He said, no, 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 this is my inheritance. God promised me. I remember his word. I remember what he's spoken over in my life. I know I might look like 85 years old, but put a sword in my hand and I'll fight just like I would, I would back then. The Bible says that the land became his inheritance. That means Caleb overcame all his enemies and kicked those people out. Amen. Caleb did not walk according to the flesh. He walked according to the spirit. 
He didn't look at himself and consider his weaknesses in his body. He did not look at himself, consider what he could not do in his own flesh, but he looked at his God and he remembered what the Lord told him. And he chose to stand and believe God's word and walk by faith and not by sight. And what he could not do with the flesh, he did it by faith. And faith caused him to inherit his promise. <laughs> by faith. By faith. And I want to tell you, that's the way God wants all of us to walk. He will not bless your flesh, but he'll bless your faith. He's not looking to see how strong you are, how talented and gifted you might be. None of that matters to God. The only thing that matters is the faith that you have in him. If you can have faith that God can use you, you will see greatness. If you can have faith that God will use you, there ain't no limit what God can do through your life. God wants to raise up a people that are walking by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Walking by faith and not by sight. The Bible says you will live in houses that you didn't build. That you will reap a harvest that you didn't sow. I'm telling you, there are so much blessings that are waiting for you that God wants to take you into that place of blessing, take you into that promised land. But you're not going to get there just by complaining all the time. You're not going to get there with the strength of your hand, walking in fear. No, you're only going to get there walking in faith. By faith you will enter in. Don't begin in the spirit and then try to finish the work in the flesh. Your prayers are going to take you in there. Your confessions are going to take you in there. Your faith is going to take you in there. Not your skill and your abilities and your... I mean, I know you might be talented and gifted and all that good stuff, but I want to tell you, God upon your life is more talented and more gifted than you could ever imagine. And what you build with your own strength and with your own hands, you become your own God and it just takes one moment for that whole thing to come on down. But when you build it by faith, it doesn't matter what comes your way. Nothing can destroy you. Nothing can hinder you as you walk in faith. Even if you lost everything, God can restore it in one moment because God's the one that brought it to you. Tell your neighbor by faith. We're not, we're not meant to walk by, by, by the flesh. Mankind was never meant to walk by flesh. Mankind was, was we're spirit, we're more spirit than we are in flesh. When we walk by flesh, we die. Every time we try to make it in our own will, and our own thoughts, it never works out. When you try to do it your own way, you, always, you get yourself in more problems. Say, say you had a financial need and you try to make it your own way, so I'll, you know what? I, I got to pay that bill. I, I'll just, I know, I'll go to the pawn store. Yeah, they'll, they'll say they'll give me some money for, for my car title. Yay! Now, not only, you still got financial problems, and now you're walking. Why don't you just go to God? Why don't you learn how to pray for what you need? Amen. To walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. To cast all your cares upon the Lord for he cares for you. Amen. To grab a hold of God's promise for your life and begin to hold that word strong inside your heart and begin to expect what God said is yours. The Bible says, he who did not spare his own son, how much more will he freely give you all things? He loved you so much that he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for your sins. Can't you think that the same God that will send his son to pay the price of his life at the cross of Calvary, that same God knows what you need and will provide for all your needs? He loves you so much to, keep, to let you just be by yourself. Even when you try to run away from God. You say, I'm not going to church. I'm not going to do nothing with God. You try to run away, but then he surrounds you with people that are always talking about God. You even wake up early in the morning. I'm not going to hear nothing about God. And you turn on the TV and there I am preaching the word of God. God has a plan and purpose for your life, but he wants you to walk by faith. Say, by faith. By faith, by faith, 
By faith. By faith. How, how do you build a marriage? By faith. How do you build a business? By faith. When everyone says, oh, you can't make it. No, 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 I, I, I'm going to make it. How are you going to make it? By faith. It doesn't mean that, 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 that you're lazy. It doesn't mean that you're just spending time praying. No. Once you hear the word of the Lord, then you step out by faith. Amen. Caleb, Caleb didn't stay home praying in the corner. Caleb grabbed that sword and he says, I got the word of the Lord. That's all I need. I'm going. I'm going. I'm, all I need is God's permission, and I'm going. I heard from God. When you hear from God, you step out by faith. You step out by faith. You put your faith into action. Faith without works is dead. I'm believing, God, that every one of you will, will become so prosperous. I'm believing that we're going to have so many people that, that are raising up businesses that, that have never been created before, that you're providing jobs for people in this community, that, that, that God is prospering you everywhere, that banks are asking you to sit on their board because you're so blessed and you own half the bank. I'm believing, God, that overwhelming wealth will be upon your life. What is it for, Pastor? Is this like I have five or six houses? No! It's for the preaching of the gospel. Amen. For the preaching of the gospel. That's all it is. It's for the gospel. So that when we die and we get to stand before God, we get to see the great harvest of salvation that came because we sowed into the kingdom of God. So that when we stand before God, he can say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Let me show you the mansions that I've been preparing for you all this time. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the only way we're going to get there is by faith. That's the only way. That's the only way. I know, I know you're skilled. I know you have talents. I know you have education. But there's a lot of talented, skilled, and educated people that are homeless, broke, and have nothing. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes, the blessing of the Lord makes one prosperous and adds no sorrow. You know, some people say more money, more problems. Not when you're blessed by God. Not when you're blessed by God because your money has a purpose. Your money has a plan. People might come with all their schemes and try to, try to steal your money. But your money is protected by angels. Your money is invested in the kingdom of God. Thieves cannot break in and steal. Hallelujah. You know, when you walk by faith, understand this. When you walk by faith, you are in constant encouragement. Because you are not allowing the things that you see to dictate your emotions. When you walk by faith, what you see you know is temporary. Tell your neighbor, what I see is temporary. Again, what I see is temporary. Again, what I see is temporary. But the word of God says, but what we believe is eternal. But pastor, they're saying that they're going to lay off everybody. That's only a temporary situation. God says he's going to bless you and make you a blessing. That's a permanent condition. But pastor, they say that they're going to shut the doors. That's only temporary. God says he's going to prosper you, that whatever you touch will prosper. Understand this. When the door closes... It's not to there to destroy you. We're walking by faith, right? Amen. It's not there to destroy you. It's there to position you. Amen. Listen to me. When adversity comes your way, it's not there to destroy you. It's there to position you. To position you into the place that God had called you to be in all along. And so when you are walking these, 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 this road and it looks like everything is crumbling around you, remember that your feet are not on quicksand. You're standing on the rock of your salvation. And understand you're being led by the Holy Spirit. You're being led by the Holy Spirit. And even though it might look like it, it's failure that's before you, that what you see looks like destruction. Close your eyes. And begin to see your God. And begin to see your, his majesty. And begin to remind yourself on his promises. 
because that is where you're headed to. What you're going through, it might be an education experience. It might be a testing of your faith. It might be a trial for a moment, but the Bible says joy comes in the morning. I'm telling you, God will turn it around. He will bless you. He will prosper you. He will fulfill his word over your life if you will walk by faith. The Bible says that God knows the ways of the righteous. He knows your ways. When you walk with a pure heart before God, I'm not saying that you got everything perfect in your life and you, you know, you, you're doing everything as wonderfully and as skillfully as the, as the greatest man or woman of God, but Jesus is with you. And you're, well, you're willing to, be adjust, to adjust your walk as God leads you. You're, you're humble yourself before the Lord. And as you humble yourself before the Lord, the Lord will exalt you in due season. He'll, he'll, he'll say, not here, not here, there. And when you get that place where he puts you, it's going to be one of the greatest blessings you've ever experienced in your life. And you're going to say, look what the Lord has done for me. Because no man can get glory for what God is going to do in your life. No man. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor by faith. I want to give you three things about faith. Three steps of faith. Three steps of faith. Number one, hear and believe the word of God. Number one, hear and believe the word of God. Number two, speak your faith. Speak your faith. Don't stay quiet. Speak your faith. Speak it out. Speak it out. Hear the word of God. Speak your faith. When God says, I'm going to use you in business, begin to tell people, God's, God has a business for me. I'm going to start a business. God, God wants me to do business, so I got to do it. They might say, what are you going to do? I don't know, but I'm a businessman, and I'm serving the Lord through my business. And it's not one business. It's many businesses. Amen. So speak your faith. And people will look at you and say, oh, you're crazy. You can't do it. Don't you know you come from San Benito? <laughs> Don't you know you come from Harlingen? Don't you know you're from the valley? That's okay. You're just not meant to hear it. Let me tell someone else. I'm going to speak my faith. Hallelujah. I don't care what they say. I'm going to speak my faith. I mean, I'll walk down the street. Oh, I'm going to start a business, this business that God's going to have me start. It's going to be one of the greatest businesses in the world. Amen. It's going to produce so much money for the kingdom. Oh, I can't wait to write those million-dollar checks. I can't wait to honor God with my wealth. I can't wait. I'm so excited that God's going to allow me to, to write a million-dollar check that today I'm going to write a $10 check because that's where I'm at. Amen. I'm not going to wait to get to a million to honor God. I'm going to honor God where I'm at because if I can honor God with a little now, I can honor God with a much later. Amen. Amen. So speak your faith. Tell your neighbor, speak your faith. Don't be quiet. Don't shut up. Speak your faith. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, speak your faith. Yeah, you, everybody's real quick to speak their fear. We're not going to speak our fear. We're going to speak our faith. We're going to speak our faith. I'm not going under. I'm going over. I'm not defeated. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm not poor. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I don't care if you have only one cent in your pocket. You're blessed. If you got Jesus, you're blessed. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm rich. Amen. Tell your other neighbor, I'm loaded. I'm loaded. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm prosperous. prosperous. Amen. Amen. We speak in our faith. Amen. Speak in our faith. Amen. Praise God. So, so number one, hear and believe the word of God. Number two, speak your faith. And number three, act on your faith. Amen. Faith without works is dead. You might say, oh, God's going to bless my business. Oh, what business are you in? I don't have a business. <laughs> Act on your faith. You should be researching. You should be knocking on doors. You should be creating and thinking. You know, get a piece of paper. Start writing a business plan. Well, Pastor, I don't know how to write a business plan. Learn. Learn. Get on the internet. Google knows how to write a business plan. Amen? Hallelujah. So hear, speak, and act. Amen? Hear, speak, and act. Now, I want to just give you permission. Dare to dream. Dare to dream. Now, we can look around this place. We can see ourselves at a certain size, a certain limit. A certain amount of people could fit in this room. 800,000 people could fit in this room. But when I close my eyes, 
Ooh, I could be before 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. I could look at myself that I'm just talking to the amount of people that are here. But if I see through that camera lens right there, I could be speaking to millions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dare to dream. I'm not going to limit myself by what I see. I'm not going to limit myself by what others have done. I will only limit myself to my faith in God, and I have big faith. Amen. Dare to dream. Dare to dream. And when you dream, look for someone that God will anoint and allow you to walk with. Unite with them. If you're married, that's your husband or your wife. And let me just tell you about this. When God puts a dream inside you and God says, I want you to use your faith to go into a place you've never been before. And you begin to speak those dreams to your husband or speak those dreams to your wife. Don't destroy their faith. Listen to me. Don't destroy their faith. Be an encourager of their faith. Take your eyes off what they've done in the past and put your eyes upon Jesus. Be someone that will say, you know what? Let me unite with, with your faith. I'm going to believe that God's going to take you there. I'm going to believe that God's going to use you that way. I, I believe that you can build because God said that this is a year to build. And so you unite your faith with them. The Bible says one could put a thousand to flight, two could put ten thousand to flight. You need someone to unite with so that you can become ten thousand times stronger. And so when you walk by faith and you find someone that can believe God with you, when the enemy comes with his attacks and tries to discourage you, because understand, when you walk by faith, it's a fight. You're going to fight. I mean, it's hard to say I'm blessed when there's no money in the bank. It's hard to say God shall supply my needs when there's no food in the house. It's hard to say, I'm going to go to school when there is no money for it, tuition. And you're going to face that obstacle. and You're going to face that problem. God's not going to provide for you where you're going to say, oh, it's just so easy. As soon as I think it, it gets there. You've got to fight the good fight of faith. You've got to hold on when everybody else has given up. You've got to be like Caleb. I might be old and 85 years old, but I'm going to take that mountain even though I might not be as strong. I am strong in Christ Jesus. And if you don't faint not, understand this, the, 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 the success of your faith is not based upon God. It's based upon you. If you don't faint not, if you keep holding on and you keep believing, you keep on speaking, you keep on doing according to the word of the Lord, watch what God will do in your life. Amen. Pastor, what if it's so difficult, so hard? That means the blessing is going to be even greater. Amen. It's going to be even greater. You know, sometimes things might have to take a little, little while to get there, but the blessing will be greater. Amen. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. Always ask yourself this question, is God real? Yes. Did God speak to me? Yes. Did he tell me to do something else? No. So I'm going to keep doing what God told me to do. I'm going to keep doing what God told me to do. This is the year to build. And I'm thinking every, everything. I'm, I, I believe that we're going to spend millions of dollars in ministry. We're going to spend millions of dollars. We're going to build churches. We're going to build TV stations. We're going to build radio stations. We're going, to, we're going to send ministers around the world to preach the gospel. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. And you might say, well, pastor, you know, how can we do that if we don't have all the resources by faith? Because the word of God does not look at your resources and determine your future. That's by flesh. The word, the, God says, I'm going to do this through you. And as you go, the resources will come. When you read or hear or study any great man of God or woman of God that does anything for the Lord, None of them, not one of them, had the resources to do what God called, called to do. Every one of them stepped out by faith. By faith, I'm going. By, I heard the word of the Lord, I believe it. One man of God, John G. Lake, early 1900s, 
God said, I want you to go to, to South Africa. He had no money. And as soon as he committed to go into South Africa, the Lord provided enough for him to get on the boat. Here he is, his whole family and his children, they're on a boat on the way to South Africa. And while he's going over there, he's on the boat, then he hears that, that he needs $300 to get off the boat. They wanted to make sure he had enough money to, to survive in South Africa. And he had no money. He had no money at all. God said, stand in line. So he stood in line. And when they came to check, if you had the $300 as he was standing in line, a man went up to him, handed him something in his hand. When he opened it up, it was $300. The guy said, do you have your $300? Yes. And he hands it to the man. A pastor, that's a miracle. Yes, our God does miracles. Amen. Our God does miracles. Amen. Amen. When, when he, understand this, he went by faith. Nobody told him or invited him to go. He just went by faith. God told him to go. He listened to God. You got to know your God. Amen. There's some things that you think, oh, God told me to do it. And then God didn't tell you anything to do it. You just thought about it. But if you know your God, you spend time with the Lord, and God puts this, this peace inside of you, step out. Do it in Jesus' name. And when he gets to, to South Africa, now he has all his kids, his wife, and they're in the foreign land in South Africa. They had no money. No, they didn't know anybody there, and they're there on the dock, and, and someone comes up to them. Are, are you the man of God from America? Yes, that's me. A woman said, God told me to come over here, handed him the keys to her house. The Lord provided. It's been like that for me. It will be like that for you. But you got to step out of faith. It's by faith, by faith. There's two ways to walk. You can either walk in the flesh or you can walk in faith. I don't know about you. I'm going to walk in faith. If I walk in the flesh... I'm going to be so disappointed. I'm going to need every drug there is in this world. I'm going to need every addiction in this world. Because I'm going to go from one fear to another fear. I'm going to get to a fear. I'm going to feel like, oh, everything's falling apart. I need something to drink. I need something to put. I don't care what it is. Just put it in me. I need it. But if I walk by faith and I get to a place, I get excited. Instead of getting fearful, I get excited. Oh, there's no way to make it except the miracle. Praise the Lord. I serve a God who does miracles. And he's the one that brought me here. Praise. I get to see his glory. I get to see his glory. Hallelujah. You can stand at that place. Thank you, Lord, for taking me to the edge of the cliff. Knowing that his angels will carry you if you fall over. Amen. You become God's responsibility. Your life becomes God's responsibility. Your future becomes God's responsibility. You walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? Hallelujah. How many believe that God can prosper you greatly? Amen. Hallelujah. How, how many of you have been believing God for business opportunities? Let me see your hands. Praise God. Stand up on your feet. If you've been believing God for business, just stand up right where you're at. Hallelujah. If you've been believing God that God will, will bless you in the area of business, that God's going to give you creative ideas. That God's going to speak to you about doing things you've never done before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands where you're at. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. I thank you for these business people. Father, I thank you for those that you've called into business. Father, I thank you for creative ideas. Lord, that you are leading them, that you're prospering. Lord, that they, they've chosen to step out by faith and not dream about just getting a job, but they dream about creating jobs and creating wealth. Your word says that you will give us the power to create wealth. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing upon them right now. In the name of Jesus, the power to create wealth. And Father, I ask you to use them mightily for the glory of God, that by faith they shall go places they've never been before. They shall do things they've never done before. They shall prosper from the north, south, east, and west. They shall have creativity that only comes from heaven. We bless them right now, Father God, and we thank you, Lord, that they are doing this for the gospel. They are following you, Lord, so that you can use them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go and get our tithes and offerings ready.
I want to encourage you to give today. Understand this, that in the word of God, there's only one way to prosper, and that's through your giving. That's through your giving. The only way that God promises that he will prosper you is through your giving. It all starts with your tithes and your offerings. If your heart is not for God, you will never honor God with your tithes and offerings. So I want to encourage you, honor God. Honor God with your tithes and offerings and what, watch what the Lord will do for your life. Amen. The word of God says, give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall man give unto your bosom. In other words, God says, I'm going to release such a blessing upon you that this world is going to have to give to you as you give to me. Amen. Praise God. Let's go and get our offerings ready.